everyone, and welcome to the Tamale Maker's Daughter podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Schimmel. I bring you this podcast to talk about my experiences as an undocumented immigrant living in America. I also talk about other topics such as pop culture, self-love, up-and-coming artists, and anything else that comes to my mind. If you want to hear more, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thanks! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Tamale Maker's Daughter podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Schimmel. So on today's episode, I'm going to talk about how ultra important it was for me to get my driver's license right after DACA. And I'm also going to talk about my fear of driving. I actually went a long time without driving and I grew up in a very strict Mexican household and this was very evident during my teens. Back then, I wasn't really allowed to go to any parties unless they were actually family gatherings. I wasn't really allowed to hang out with friends outside of school either. So that's actually when my longing for independence started growing. So when I found out that I was undocumented, I was really heartbroken because at that time there wasn't any pathway towards getting any type of documentation, at least not for children of immigrants who came here against their will. With all that being said, since I found out about my undocumented status as a teenager, I also found out that I couldn't even qualify for a license, even if I wanted to. So my dreams of independence upon finding this out were crushed. So at the time I lived out in the sticks where a lot of places are just really spread out. So you definitely need a car to get around. And at the time there wasn't any public transportation whatsoever. So during my teens, I saw a lot of my friends get their own cars and they're basically going everywhere they wanted to go. And even though I love my friends, I did feel that jealousy of freedom that they had because I could only dream of places that I would go if I had a car. My life was basically asking friends and family for rides before DACA came into place. But even after DACA came into place, I still had to ask them for rides because I had to save enough money to get my own car. I'll fast forward to 2012 when I was finally able to get some sort of tangible documentation. And this is where DACA comes in. Uh, I was very excited about getting a driver's license. Finally, finally, I could have some sort of independence after waiting all this time. And mind you, I was 25. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I don't even know how to drive. And I don't even have enough money for a car. What the heck? And so I decided to get the ball rolling on that. I do remember that at that time, driving seemed very intimidating to me. Even though I wanted to drive for most of my teenage life, I didn't have the confidence to actually get behind the wheel yet. But my mom gave me some driving lessons and pretty soon after that, I was able to get the gist of it all. At that time, I was working a couple of jobs to support myself. And so when DACA came in, that was a huge motivator for me to start putting money aside for a car. So my main job was waitressing and I absolutely needed my friends and family to give me rides, get me from A to B. And I remember that I would only ever ask for rides when I absolutely needed it. But since I was going on years of asking friends and family for rides, Feelings and thoughts of being a burden just started growing and I remember feeling awkward now asking my friends for rides like my thought was I'm a grown ass woman I should be able to just do this and I should get my shit together so I was basically putting all the blame on myself which wasn't 100% the case. I really felt that at the time since others were driving me around, I felt that it was kind of like a metaphor for me not having full control of my life. I was always on somebody else's time, especially the days where I had to wait hours after getting off of work for somebody to be able to pick me up. I lived in a place where there was no public transportation 
And as I had mentioned before, the place where I lived was really spread out. So walking to and from work, it wasn't really possible, especially during the really cold days and the really hot days. I didn't feel like it was at all safe to walk miles home. So I did hit some luck when I actually ended up moving to a pretty rural place and I was able to afford a bike at a local thrift store. And so I was able to go to and from work with that bike. But again, on really hot days, on really cold days, or on days where it was just raining cats and dogs, it was horrible because it wasn't safe. So fast forward to a couple of years later and I was finally able to get a license. And not only that, things were actually looking up because I had just accepted a new job at a company I always wanted to work with. I had my own place now and I had a new car. Well, a used car, but you know what I mean. But then the unthinkable happened. I got into an accident with a 16 wheeler on my way to the first day on the job. How about that? The accident was brutal and my car ended up looking like a crushed can of sardines. Luckily, I was able to crawl out of the window of the car unscathed, physically at least, and the truck driver wasn't hurt either. And so when I got home, my way of thinking was that, you know what, shit happens, I'll move on from this, it was just another day and I screwed up, Whatever, we'll get over it. We'll just put it behind us somehow and yeah. But this is where my fear of driving and anxiety really began. Since I had just totaled my car, a lot of thoughts of worthlessness started going through my head and the realization of having to start back to square one got me feeling very depressed. And so the guilt of asking friends and family returned and the feeling of being a burden came back. In that year, I felt like I needed something different and that I needed a different change of scenery. So I decided to pack up all my things and I moved to LA. My thoughts were, well, LA has a public transportation system and I could get into the art scene while I'm there, save up for a car, adapt, Win-win. It'll be all right. What could possibly go wrong? But I had done a derpy thing. I actually didn't visit LA before moving out there, so I didn't know what to expect. I also didn't have a job lined up. After a couple of months of searching, I finally landed a job at a company I wanted to work for, and I thought things were going to look up. But while I was still living in LA, I still struggled with the fear of driving, and I struggled to save enough money for a car anyway. Things actually got way worse in LA, and even though I had more freedom than I did back at my hometown, I was riding the bus five days a week, and I was spending around three hours a day just commuting, just being on the bus and waiting for the bus. And theoretically, it should have taken me 30 minutes to get uh, to and from work but since LA traffic is insane, it took me that long to get anywhere. And not to mention uh, when there was actually a delay for the buses or when there was actually an accident, hell on earth. This is one of the main reasons why whenever I hear someone out here in the sticks actually complaining about traffic, I'm just like, you're spoiled. You haven't seen it. You haven't been there like I have. <laughs> so after a couple of years of living out in LA, I decided no more, no mas will I deal with this madness. So I decided to move back to the country. I mean, country living is more my speed. Who was I kidding? So now that I was back home, I was even more motivated to get shit done, get my act together, because anything compared to LA life was easy peasy, sort of. But I still had that looming fear of anxiety and being behind the wheel. Deep inside, I knew that I had put up excuses back in LA to not be able to get a car and because I still had that anxiety 
and that fear of getting behind the wheel, I had this monster that I hadn't conquered yet. So when I moved back, my older brother didn't notice that I was pretty much being dodgy when it came to trying to get behind the wheel. I would always shy away from situations where I needed to drive to the store in a short distance using his car even though I had my license. So my older brother kept nudging me and nudging me about this driving situation. I mean, he was one of the main people that was driving me here to there when I moved back, so it made sense. And he did care a lot. So he kept nudging me. He's like, when are you gonna get your state license? When are you gonna get your car? Haven't you already saved up? And I would get so pissed off at him. I'd be like, dude, get off my case. I get it. I'm going to get to it. I'll get to it. But then he brought up a good point. He was like, how are you going to drive away from zombies if the zombie apocalypse ever happened? And I was like, oh, yeah. So he and my mom actually started giving me driving lessons again because from the traumatic experience and never really dealing with it, I had actually forgotten how to drive. I do have to say that each time when I was getting back on the road, I was listening to a lot of my favorite music and one band that really did stick out was Incubus. I listened to their song probably a million times, their song called Drive, and I found that the familiarity of the music actually made me feel very safe and made me feel good for some reason. So that helped me get through that big hum, that giant fear of being behind the wheel. So a big thanks to my older brother and my mom for getting me through that very traumatic experience for getting me to see that I actually really needed to conquer that monster, that fear of driving. And so I finally really started feeling in control of my life. So after all that, I finally bought a new car. Well, an old used car, but you know. So present day, when I do get behind the wheel, I still have a tiny bit of anxiety, but it's not a huge problem to where I actually can't get to where I need to be. If I have to drive, I'll go ahead and drive. It's not a big problem. And I do have to say that if you're somebody out there who also has a fear of driving, I mean, it's not odd. You're not weird for having that feeling. And at least I don't think so. What I do is I do a couple of breathing exercises before I actually drive off if I have a day where my anxiety is just really like flaring up. For me, it was mostly letting go of that insecurity and gaining enough confidence to be behind the wheel. And accepting the fact that there are just some things that I simply cannot control. But what I can control is my feelings behind the wheel. And I can control my actions behind the wheel. And as long as I'm careful, I'll be okay. So that's me. That's my little story. And I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you liked it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on the flip side. Bye.